And uh, full screen. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, very happy to see uh, uh, so many uh, uh, participants of today's event. And uh, I, I like to see uh, the increased interest to uh, Eurasian studies in the field. Uh, uh, and as a program, uh, at NU. It is true that uh, May in Eurasian studies uh, nowadays uh, in Kazakhstan is the strongest uh, English medium program that prepares specialists in uh, uh, Eurasian studies as a, as, a, as a region, but also Eurasian studies as a set of problems that are specifically uh, uh, relevant and important for, uh, uh, for this uh, post-Soviet uh, region. So what is Eurasia? Uh, some of you are uh, especially uh, puzzled with this uh, term Eurasian studies. What does it mean? Well, we understand Eurasia uh, as a hinterland of the uh, uh, largest global continent. Uh, and Eurasia is understood by us as a uh, a critically important crossroads of, of uh, different civilization and cultures. Uh, first of all, European, Near Eastern, Inner Asian, and East Asian civilizations. Because we know that uh, Kazakhstan is uh, 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 occupies the critically important, uh, strategically important uh, position in the very center of Eurasian continent. And uh, uh, from uh, from the time when uh, the capital of uh, Kazakhstan was uh, relocated to Nur Sultan. Nur Sultan actually uh, almost accurately uh, uh, is uh, uh, situated uh, in the very center of Eurasian continent and thus becomes a global uh, uh, leader in, uh, uh, in Eurasia, whereas uh, Nazarbayev University is one of the uh, flagman universities uh, of, of Kazakhstan. Uh, is, uh, as I believe, destined to become a global leader in Eurasian studies. So most of our students are interested uh, in the uh, smaller areas, which uh, coincides with the uh, so-called uh, former uh, uh, Soviet Central Asian republics. Uh, most of our students write, uh, make, make research focused on Kazakhstan. Uh, some parts of Russia, but also Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Xinjiang, which is the province in uh, People's Republic of China. But we also have uh, a number of other students who are interested in uh, uh, broader uh, regions, uh, some of them studying Persian culture, uh, some students are interested in, in Indian cultures, uh, Turkey, uh, Eastern Europe, uh, Europe like Poland, Czech Republic, and so on and so forth. So uh, uh, why Eurasian studies? See, 1990s, uh, the Eurasian region has experienced incredible, incredible changes, right? In all, uh, 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 in all spheres, be it political, economical, cultural, and so on. As you understand, uh, uh, these uh, transformations are uh, connected with the uh, uh, one of the most important, maybe most important event of the 20th century, the collapse of the Soviet Union and uh, uh, gaining uh, of the independence status of uh, so many former uh, Soviet republics, including Kazakhstan. So the uh, uh, MA in Eurasian Studies prepares students to uh, conceive uh, these critical developments in Eurasian, uh, in Eurasia, uh, both in past and present. By providing exceptional opportunities to study in multidisciplinary field, and our program is uh, uh, multidisciplinary, we always uh, uh, emphasize this aspect, sorry, too early. Uh, 
just a moment with me. Yeah, um, uh, the, pro the program trains uh, academics, future academic scholars, teachers, NGO managers, journalists, and uh, government, mi government ministry employees. Uh, uh, and in general, we are training the uh, experts, which are fully aware of the uh, aware of the historical background of the uh, uh, Eurasia and uh, the most uh, most important trends uh, Eurasia experienced in the uh, last uh, uh, five or four centuries. Well, whom the uh, I mean, Eurasian studies for. Uh, there is a strong demand within con contemporary Kazakhstan for uh, internationally credible English medium graduate education in the humanities and social sciences. Uh, there's a big lack, a uh, huge lack of the, uh, 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 I would say globally and world competitive specialists in, uh, in area studies and in uh, sociology and political sciences uh, focused on, on the uh, uh, central parts of Eurasia. Uh, MA in Eurasian studies uh, uh, is actually the only one at Nazarbayev University. Uh, at Nazarbayev University suitable uh, for students who have graduated uh, in languages, literature, history, ethnography, and regional studies on undergraduate level. Given the unique location of Nazarbayev University, uh, the center of uh, Eurasian continent, and the opportunities for uh, li uh, linguistic and political developments offered by SSH, the program already has proven the ability to attract uh, international students. Uh, the strength of the program, as I already uh, mentioned earlier a few times, uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, advantages of the program is the, its uh, uh, geographical location of Nur Sultan, which allows uh, the, uh, uh, our students to be in the center of, uh, of uh, uh, Kazakhstan uh, with full access to uh, the archival resources, uh, to uh, you know, uh, governmental uh, archives and uh, 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 museums and different other institutions that are helpful for their research. Uh, uh, Nur Sultan offers uh, unrivaled concentration of the highly qualified and internationally uh, recognized faculty with their uh, special academic interest in, in Eurasia. I, I do understand, I do realize that now in the time of, time of pandemic, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, so far, our students have to study remotely and cannot use this uh, uh, opportunity of geographical uh, uh, location in, in, in Nur Sultan. But I, uh, uh, I hope and we all do expect that pandemic is, uh, is not forever. It will, uh, it will be over soon. And uh, we have uh, uh, very nice uh, educational uh, and research infrastructure here at NU, uh, very dynamic student life and uh, uh, extremely convenient living conditions. Uh, and the, in general, the program is uh, globally competitive. Uh, it's locally and regionally relevant, academically rig rigorous, and it's interdisciplinary because all of our students have the opportunity to Develop, develop uh, in, uh, in, in multiple spheres, sociology, history, uh, uh, cultural studies, and so on and so forth. Let me introduce some of our uh, faculty because uh, as I already mentioned, faculty is uh, what makes our program especially strong. Uh, uh, Professor Ulay, Ulay Shamiloglu, uh, who got his PhD from Columbia University and who taught for many years, first at Indiana University and then University of Wisconsin, Wisconsin Medicine is the uh, uh, globally recognized uh, uh, 
specialist in the history of uh, uh, Turkic Asia, uh, Golden Horde, post-Mongol reality, in Middle East and Central Eurasia. Uh, he studies the history of Turco-Islamic civilization, uh, intellectual uh, developments among the Muslim Turkic people of the Ottoman and Russian empires. Yulay Shamil Agli is one of the uh, most cited uh, humanities scholars uh, 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 in the world. And uh, we are extremely lucky that uh, Yulay Shamil Agli not only is a part of NU, but also is very actively involved in the uh, MA and also is a director of PhD program, which is closely connected with, with uh, MA in Eurasian studies. Professor Alima Bisenova, uh, a well-known specialist in, in Kazakhstan. She got her PhD uh, from Cornell University. Uh, she's extremely influential, uh, influence, uh, influential uh, intellectual in, in Kazakhstan nowadays. Her research interests are uh, in the sphere of uh, uh, social implications of post-Soviet development through the prism of the changing environment of Kazakhstani cities. Uh, uh, newly emerging lifestyles and subjectivity, strategies of mobility, and new religious sensitivities in the urban space. Uh, Nicola Pianciola, who joined our university uh, this year, got his PhD from, PhD from University of Naples and uh, for a long time taught at uh, Hong Kong. Uh, he is uh, uh, the leading specialist in, uh, uh, in Kazakh history, history of Kazakhstan. Uh, uh, but also history of uh, Tsarist Russia and then Soviet uh, Russia and Soviet uh, uh, Central Asia, political history of Russia and Soviet, Soviet Union and the uh, Soviet policies in nomadic Central, uh, Central Asia. Nowadays, he does his research mostly on Xinjiang and Russian Far East. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, he teaches uh, multiple uh, courses at uh, Nazarbayev University. Professor Michael Ryan, uh, uh, PhD uh, at the University of Maryland, and he taught at the University of Maryland for a few years before he joined NU. His research interests are very, uh, I would say, uh, uh, cover some urgent uh, issues like uh, uh, social scientific responses to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, he has already published uh, a book on COVID-19 uh, quite recently. Uh, he, and uh, uh, of course, his studies are involve uh, uh, the issues of genders and uh, sexuality. Keres Shen, PhD from Miami University of, uh, at Oxford. Uh, she's interested in politics of immigration, national identity in Eurasia. She studies uh, transborder migration, state, state control over migrants, uh, primarily Central Asian migrants in, in Russia. Uh, look at this chart, which shows the brief history and achievements uh, of uh, our program. Our program is, is uh, relatively young. It was uh, established in 2015. Well, it, uh, formally it started in 2014, but the first uh, uh, graduates uh, 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 seven first graduates uh, 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 finished the program in 2015. And here you can see the number of graduates. Uh, 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 it's not very visible, but actually the program is, is, is steadily growing. As each year we uh, accept more and more students. And so far we have uh, uh, six uh, uh, cohorts of graduates. Uh, we, have, uh, we have had so far six international students in our program, at least one in every cohort. We have three Chinese students, one American, one Mexican, one Malaysian this year. Six of our graduates teach at uh, 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 Kazakh uh, University of Law, Humanities and Law. Alma Management University, Suleiman Demirel University is one of the leading universities in Kazakhstan. Uh, some uh, of our graduates study at uh, Nazarbayev Intellectual School and so on. Uh, five of our graduates were uh, 
recruited by Nazarbayev University. Two, uh, uh, two of them continue their doctoral studies at the PhD in Eurasian studies. One works at the private Shaimerdena Foundation, and one is journalist at Astana Times. Uh, but we also have uh, um, uh, a few students who continue their education in different uh, Western uh, high-ranking high uh, uh, ranking uh, uh, universities and PhD programs. Uh, university uh, in London, Free University of uh, Amsterdam, University of Tübingen. Uh, one of my student students is now pursuing her PhD course at Chicago. Another one, uh, another uh, my student studies at George, George, Georgetown. And this year, uh, uh, one of the students joined the PhD program at St. Louis. Uh, let me tell you uh, a couple of things about the structure of the program. The MA in Eurasian Studies is a two year program of study. And uh, during these two year, years of study, you have to earn 120 ECTS credits. Uh, so uh, let me now uh, outline the contents of each semester. Uh, year, uh, year one, fall semester, uh, all students have to take three compulsory classes, no electives during the first semester. Uh, so uh, three compulsory classes are uh, important. They lay the foundation uh, for the uh, uh, students' training. All students have to take Introduction to Eurasia, uh, taught by uh, Alima Bisenova. Each of these courses, uh, each of these courses, uh, each of these courses gives students eight uh, ECTS. So Introduction to Eurasia is the course which uh, 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 introduce uh, students to the issues specific for Eurasian regions. Students have to develop the skills to understand and make use of the cutting edge of scholarship on Eurasia in a variety of disciplines, sociology, history, anthropology, literature, and so on. Uh, simultaneously, students take general methodology course, which is designed to introduce students to key theories, uh, uh, which are relevant across uh, multiple disciplines in the humanities and social sciences. Uh, the course is built in the way that uh, it's not taught by one uh, professor, one prof uh, professor uh, 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 who is Daniel Beben. I will. I will tell you more about, about him later, uh, is only coordinating this course, but the course is actually taught by uh, different uh, uh, faculty members who come to class and uh, tell about the range of problems they are especially interested in. Uh, qualitative methods, uh, uh, which gives again eight ECTS. Uh, the course uh, uh, introduces students to uh, uh, to basic uh, qualitative techniques, uh, how to design and carry out research uh, in different disciplines, uh, how to uh, identify uh, the relevant topic, how to collect empirical data, how to work with statistics, uh, interviews, uh, arch archi archival data, and so on and so forth. Uh, okay, next. Uh, in the spring semester of the uh, first year, students uh, take one coordinated and two elective courses. Uh, so uh, the disciplinary methodology is the uh, course which uh, covers major theories and methodologies, but this time you study these uh, theories and methodologies specifically with your uh, uh, advisors. Two internal members of, uh, of your thesis committee will advise you on the reading and you will have to 
with uh, uh, theoretical literature which is specifically relevant to your uh, research topic, right? By that time, you have to at least roughly identify uh, what is going to be your uh, thesis project. Uh, or each student have to have uh, three advisors throughout the uh, uh, program. Uh, one uh, is first advisor who is uh, mainly responsible for, 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 your, uh, for the supervision over your thesis project. Then there is also second advisor, uh, which is usually a specialist in different discipline. And we also uh, make it uh, compulsory for each student to have uh, the so-called external advisor. Uh, who usually is an uh, authority or, or established specialist in, in your sphere of uh, uh, interest, in your research interest, and who is not a faculty member of Nazarbayev University. He can be or she can be a uh, professor of any other university globally, uh, in Europe, United States, uh, in any other country. And as I said, uh, students uh, uh, from the second semester of the first year, year, students can choose two elective courses, each of them uh, at uh, eight ECTS. Uh, and uh, uh, you can elect these courses from any discipline. It can be anthropological course, course in sociology, history, world literature and languages, political science, and Turkic studies. Year one, summer semester, uh, uh, is the time when uh, you have a chance to uh, collect your empirical data for your research. So what usually students do, they uh, uh, travel uh, throughout the areas of their interest, meet with people, interview them, uh, it all depends on the uh, uh, on your discipline and uh, what kind what kind of research uh, are you pursuing. Uh, it can be collecting GIS information. Uh, it can be archaeological research. It can be archival research. Uh, we have some funds to send students to uh, different uh, archives throughout Kazakhstan and internationally. Uh, for example, my students uh, was collecting uh, her archives in St. Petersburg. My another student is uh, currently collecting uh, his uh, uh, archival, uh, doing his archival research in Almaty and Orenburg and so on. Year two, fall semester, uh, uh, all students take one coordinated and two elective courses in the uh, in this semester. Uh, <clears throat> thesis one, which adds 15 ECTS. All students are required to, co to complete a master thesis, which is a major research project undertaken in consultation and under supervision of, of two faculty uh, advisors of, uh, at NU and one external reviewer. Thesis should be at least uh, 20,000 words. Uh, actually, uh, most of the th uh, thesis are between 20,000 and 30,000 words. Roughly, it's uh, I think from 60 to 80 pages. Uh, and uh, uh, no, uh, after the students have empirical data, which they uh, incorporate to the research, uh, they also uh, can uh, elect two more courses in uh, any discipline um, they find uh, relevant. Uh, year two, spring semester, the most important semester, because uh, during that semester, students have to finish their thesis project. Uh, uh, th uh, under thesis two, which adds 25 ECTS, all students are required to complete a master thesis, which uh, usually consists of uh, three, sometimes four or five chapters. So in the spring semester, uh, the uh, uh, thesis has to be completed and sent to external review. We have to uh, make comments, and students have to incorporate these uh, comments into the text. 
and simultaneously students take another two uh, elective, no, 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 uh, uh, one elective course, uh, 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 which uh, weighs some eight ECTS, uh, again, multidisciplinary. Uh, and uh, uh, after the uh, thesis is uh, completed, after the thesis draft is completed, uh, usually in uh, uh, May, all students have uh, Viva Voce examination. So we uh, invite uh, all faculty members and other students uh, to this event. Uh, uh, students will have to answer questions concerning the research and uh, judged on the quality of thesis and the uh, uh, quality of the responses of students' responses to the questions. The committee members, three committee members, two advisors and uh, one external reviewer have to uh, figure out what will be the grade uh, 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 for the MA thesis. Just a few words about the uh, elective courses uh, we offer at NU. We offer a uh, 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 very good choice of different elective courses uh, at NU. Uh, uh, for example, HST 511, Exploring Eurasian Environmental History, allows students to uh, look into the uh, history of different uh, technocratic projects on the territory of Kazakhstan and how it affected uh, ecology and environment in Kazakhstan. Uh, you will uh, discuss the uh, nuclear tests in Semipalatinsk Polygon. You will discuss the uh, uh, Baikonur uh, air, 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 airspace projects and how they affected the, for example, the uh, number of uh, uh, Saigaks in Kazakhstan, how uh, detrimental is the effects of these uh, tests and uh, projects uh, on the uh, wildlife in, in Kazakhstan. Of course, you will discuss the Aral Sea catastrophe and how uh, 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 this uh, 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 sea is uh, gradually recovering uh, from the uh, adventurous projects of, in Soviet time, uh, economic projects that uh, uh, brought it to, to uh, drying out. Anthropology course, Materiality in Eurasian Studies. Uh, this course discusses uh, uh, the uh, importance and significance of material cul culture in uh, uh, nomadic societies uh, of uh, Central Eurasia. How things uh, determined the traditional culture of uh, 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 in traditional cultures. Uh, 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 how technology technologies proliferated throughout Eurasia. How, uh, uh, for example, Silk Road uh, facilitated uh, uh, exchange of technologies between West and and East. And how we can read these developments, uh, say, in, in uh, archaeological research. Uh, sociological research 325, COVID-19, the social cultural aspects of the pandemic. There's no need to uh, explain how important it is uh, uh, to conceive the consequences of uh, uh, of uh, of the ongoing pandemic on all the uh, spheres of life uh, uh, in our world today. Uh, sociological course 521, informality of and social order in Eurasia. Students are introduced to the practices of gift giving, bribery, uh, uh, kind of uh, what role uh, tribal affiliations uh, uh, and ethnicity uh, play in the uh, everyday social and political practices in today's uh, Kazakhstan, in Russia, Central Asia, and so on and so forth. Uh, oral Epic in Central Asia, a course uh, uh, which is offered by uh, uh, our faculty members from 
world literature and uh, linguistics department. Uh, this course uh, will highlight the features of uh, uh, Kazakh nomadic traditional culture, which is primarily based not on written, but on the uh, oral uh, samples. And uh, uh, how this uh, over-reliance on, on oral way of uh, 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 transmitting of the uh, transference of the information determined the face of the traditional culture of the Kazakhs. Uh, uh, we have a wide range of courses on religion. For example, one of the courses uh, that is uh, uh, usually offered by our faculty members uh, is the history of Sufism in Central Asia. You know that Kazakhstan is prominent for its, for its Sufi tradition, which is one of the uh, Islamic, uh, uh, Islamic uh, traditions which pay special attention to the cult of saints and uh, uh, everything which is connected with saints. For example, for example sacred uh, sites, sacred uh, geogra geography, sacred objects. Uh, uh, this is what makes uh, Kazakhstan very special and different from other Muslim countries. And uh, in this course, you will see and uh, learn how Sufism uh, was developing in, 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 in Kazakhstan and Central Asia in general, and how it determined the uh, face of uh, Central Asian Islam. This is all uh, I can say. If you have any questions, I, am, I will be happy to answer them all. I see some, uh, uh, some questions uh, in the chat. Uh, let me uh, answer the question from uh, Muzaffar by method, 60 page. Yeah, uh, uh, a normal thesis uh, is from 60 to 80 pages long. This is correct. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Professor, for your uh, very interesting and uh, useful presentation. So now, please, uh, dear participants, please ask your questions. Uh, you can write in the chat box or you can ask your questions through a microphone. Good evening. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, can I ask about uh, summer? Um, research and some of you uh, work practically yeah. yes how long it take can we how long how we can participate in summer internship to research to develop our research skills yeah uh, sure by the time of summer summer field work practicum uh, you already will have uh, uh, two advisors so it is your advisors who uh, uh, will recommend you what you have to do during your summertime. If uh, your topic is historical, uh, the most, most likely you will have to go to, uh, 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 to the historical archives. Depends again on, on, your, on your topic. It may be in Tashkent, it may be in Orenburg, it may be in St. Petersburg, or it may be in Beijing, right, as well. Uh, so it depends on, on what, you, what, what you study. Uh, if, you are, if your research is primarily so, sociological or anthropological, you will most likely uh, have to go to the uh, 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 various regions of Kazakhstan. Uh, so if you study, say, sacred geography and Sufi geography of, of, of Kazakhstan, uh, your, advi your advisors may recommend you to go to some uh, Sufi shrines to spend there some time. Uh, to talk to pilgrims, right? Interview them, gather some information, uh, which will become the foundation for your for your research. Uh, if uh, if uh, you will choose archaeology as your your discipline, you can join one of the archaeological teams, which uh, uh, every every uh, every summer uh, conducts uh, archaeological surveys in different parts of Kazakhstan. So you will dig the land, you will help them to identify the artifacts. You will learn how to, to do uh, your independent archaeological research uh, together with the professionals. So it all depends on uh, what kind of uh, research uh, uh, do you prefer, are you, are you interested in. Our students uh, in, uh, 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 make interviews with, for example, uh, the uh, 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 Uyghur diaspora of Kazakhstan or with uh, uh, 
sellers on the marketplace in Taras area, in Taras city. So it all depends on, on, on what you're interested in. It may be uh, 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 very diverse kinds of practices, very diverse uh, uh, methods of uh, collecting empiric, empiric, empirical material. So my uh, research field is uh, related with uh, numismatic. Uh, I started my research with Silk Road. So uh, oh. uh, that's why uh, numismatic coins uh, about uh, middle, uh, middle century, in the middle mm -hmm. century, Eurasia. And uh, I suppose uh, I need uh, to my to develop my research uh, language skills like uh, arabical and persian i suppose uh, and uh, yeah I, during the summer time in, yeah. in uh, uh, islamic and also yeah you said before uh mm -hmm. you said before and about daniel Baden, uh, professor of university another wife university you said you will introduce he, uh, him uh, i saw uh, so far, i, I don't know about you. Uh, you said that uh, Daniel Baben, uh, professor of Nazarbayev University. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. uh, you will. You said the, I will introduce him, or you uh, missed him. Daniel Baben. Uh, okay. He research uh, Nasser Khushrow. Nasser Khushrow. Uh, his research field. You said. Uh, I, I, I unfortunately I didn't get uh, the last part of your question, uh, but I, I, as far as I understand, you are interested in numismatics, and uh, in this case, uh, uh, most likely I'm not sure, but most likely you will be interested in in ar ar archaeological research, and uh, uh, I would recommend you to join one of one of our field trips. So, for example, one of our archaeologists, Aydin Junishanov, is also interested in, in numismatics. And he has his own uh, collection of, of uh, coins that he had uh, uh, unearthed uh, in different parts of Kazakhstan. So uh, I think uh, you can always uh, uh, develop in this direction. Uh, as for the uh, linguistic uh, training, uh, uh, we do offer such opportunities uh, throughout the uh, uh, whole time of the program. You can take uh, Chagatai Turki course. Uh, 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 not 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 regularly, but sometimes we do offer a course on on uh, uh, in Persian as well. You can study Russian, uh, and the course in uh, in Russian is a regular course, so you can take it at any time of the year, especially in the summertime. That there is a summer school uh, in Russian studies uh, at NU. Uh, so, uh, whatever language uh, you choose, uh, you, you can, not whatever, of course, but uh, uh, some of the languages uh, of Eurasia are being offered uh, at NU. Uh, uh, some students take the opportunity of uh, summertime also to uh, uh, go and have some probation period in uh, 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 universities uh, uh, elsewhere. For example, we have partnership with uh, Humboldt University. Some of our MA students took this opportunity to spend uh, some time at, uh, uh, at, at Berlin. Uh, you can also do it uh, if, if, uh, uh, if uh, you have collected in sufficient uh, empirical data for your research, you can spend uh, the rest of the summer somewhere else. It's also possible. Yes, other questions, please. So, uh, Professor, we have questions in the chat box. In the chat, yes, I see. Yeah, uh, let me see here. Uh, can we do research in, uh, on socioeconomic issues of Eurasia and cooperate with uh, economic department related to modernization? Uh, uh, of course, you, you, you can. Uh, but uh, if your research is uh, uh, predominantly connected with economic issues, you should consider uh, taking the uh, MA in, uh, in economics, right? It's, uh, uh, I think it's um, kind of, this program will be more relevant for you. But if your, uh, uh, your interests are broader than just simply economics, and you study, for example, the informal practices, right? Or uh, 
uh, kind of uh, sociological dimension of economics. Uh, uh, it's it's better for you to take uh, to take uh, uh, MA in Eurasian studies, and uh, 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 at least one of your electives uh, can be in the sphere of economics. Yeah, it's 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 possible. We do recommend our students to take more courses on Eurasian studies, right? And because the program program is multidisciplinary, uh, so if you take uh, kind of more than one economic course, again, it, it uh, uh, you should consider uh, the uh, kind of the opportunity to to join MA in e economics. But uh, within MIS, I think it's it's possible to take at least one economic course course in e economics. Uh, uh, Adjan, may I've written the GRE test quite recently and the results are not ready yet. I requested the, the results to be sent to Nazarbayev University. Is it okay to leave this section blank in the application form? I think it's question for, for Aizada. Right? Uh, yes, uh, this question is for Asiem. Asiem, can you please answer? Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, um, actually GRE uh, is not an official um, essential requirement uh, to apply for this program. You may provide a GRE certificate um, to improve your application, but um, this is not like um, requir requirement, entry requirement. Uh, actually, the um, uh, entry requirements are the, uh, are the follow following. Um, bachelor's degree diploma, also, you should have a transcript with minimum uh, GPA of 2.75, uh, personal uh, essay with high level of motivation and strong interest. Uh, it may consist of approximately 500 words. Uh, also, you should provide three conf confidential letters of recommendations. Uh, they should be written within the last 12 months. They can be provided from uh, your professors, uh, with whom you uh, worked uh, earlier, uh, supervisors, or uh, even uh, the uh, colleagues uh, from the working experience that is related to the program you're applying to. Uh, also, uh, IELTS uh, or TOEFL test score of uh, IELTS test score of uh, 7.0 with subscore requirements no less than six. Point zero uh, and CV. This is like the minimum requirements. And if you would like to improve your application uh, to be more competitive among other um, uh, applicants, uh, you can also uh, send a GRE certificate. Uh, but this is not like an uh, that not that required. Okay, thank you, Asim. Uh, we have the second question from Adria. Yes, what, uh, what is the visa process like for international students? I have a mail. Yes, the, uh, yes, and I also see that, see that Rasul is asking, maybe I missed when online application will be open. Yes, uh, Adrian is right, because on Monday, the um, uh, online registration uh, from uh, Monday it's open uh, and you can uh, apply uh, to this program and the deadline is uh, April 30. So uh, feel free to um, to collect your documents, uh, to apply, to ask the questions regarding the admissions, regarding the application documents and um, about uh, visa uh, visa issues. Actually, yes, we have a department uh, that works um, on this issue. Like it's uh, also it's a department of international cooperation. They can provide you information about uh, the uh, application requirements for international applicants. And uh, I also know that there is a contact person who works with uh, international students. Um, she is uh, Sandra Ariel. Uh, she is the manager of international students engagement. I think she can. Uh, I, I think she can also um, help you um, later. Could you please, um, Adrian? Right? 
Adrian May, could you please um, write me directly, like in person, uh, your email, and I can just uh, send you contacts if you would like to. Could you please provide your email address? I can send you here. Uh, I see the question about the Professor Daniel Beber. I think this is the part of the question which I have missed due to poor signal from, from Muzaffar. Yes, yes, uh, yeah. Munar, he asked yeah, uh, yeah, yes, yeah, Professor uh, Daniel Bibin is my uh, colleague. Uh, we work at one part and he's a brilliant specialist in Persian studies. He studies history of uh, 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 of uh, Ismaili uh, uh, states and societies and uh, uh, he knows Persian, he knows Arabic, he works with uh, uh, primary sources, uh, he's the member of uh, uh, International Association of Persian, Persian Studies. Uh, and uh, if you're interested in that part of the world uh, and that uh, uh, part of history, uh, uh, he will be happy uh, to be uh, your supervisor, I am sure. Okay, thank you, Professor, for your answer. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Muzaffar, for your question. Uh, we will send you a recording of this webinar uh, tomorrow. So uh, all our webinars are posted on our SSH YouTube channel. So, Professor, I have one question. Yeah, this is to Muzaffar's question about the, not, not question, but request to send the presentation. You will have the uh, recording of the whole session and, uh, and thus uh, uh, the ex full access to the presentation itself. Uh, professor, I have one question. Can you please uh, tell about uh, interesting projects or research that our students mm -hmm. have done so far? Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Isada, for this question. Uh, uh, well, uh, one of our students has uh, written a brilliant uh, thesis on the Russo-Chinese trade in the uh, 18th, 18th, 19th century. To write this thesis, she had to learn Russian. She had almost zero knowledge of Russian at the beginning of the course. Uh, but by the end of the course, she managed to utilize uh, 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 the Russian uh, archives of the 18th, 19th century. It was really fascinating. I mean, she, she, she's done a tremendous job, absolutely uh, uh, unbelievably tremendous job. And her topic was uh, uh, so well written that uh, uh, one of the eminent and leading specialists in, the, in that sphere uh, uh, was really impressed and uh, recommended her for Chicago uh, graduate program after that. Uh, uh, then uh, another research, well, we are currently uh, doing a big uh, s scientific project on the sacred geography of Kazakhstan and some of our uh, MA students are involved. Now, what they do is uh, they join us uh, for the field trips, uh, they fill the database and uh, uh, help us organizing uh, international conferences. Uh, and it's it's a invaluable uh, experience that they get uh, how to to get involved in such kind of academic activities, and uh, we are happy to share this knowledge. We are happy to uh, invite our students to join us uh, uh, in our uh, research projects. So it's all possible. And uh, as I already mentioned, some of you may join our archaeological teams, uh, uh, our anthropologists who travel. Uh, widely throughout Kazakhstan interviewing people seeing, for example, underground mosques or uh, uh, ruins of Buddhist temples uh, or uh, the uh, 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 observing the new Islamic practices of pilgrimage in, in uh, various uh, parts of Kazakhstan. Uh, so you are all welcome to, to join uh, the research projects of, of uh, our faculty members. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, we have a um, uh, question, question from Dara. She raised her hand. Um, Dara, I will ask you to unmute yourself. You can ask your questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Hi, Professor. I'm very happy to see you, to hear you, and thank you for your presentation. I actually have two questions. So you've mentioned that uh, the students of the program need to have um, three advisors, right? And yes. one of them should be external advisor, which means from different university. So my question is, who is responsible for arranging it? Faculty or students? Mm -hmm. Yudara, very happy to, uh, to hear from you. It's uh, uh, great that you attended this uh, session. Uh, it's a very good, relevant question. Uh, it's a full responsibility of the program manager, uh, and I am the director of the program, to uh, 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 help you, to help you uh, to ind identify your advisor. Uh, it means that the students themselves also participate, uh, also take part in this process. So your preferences uh, uh, pay attention, uh, your, your preferences are also taken into consideration. And I facilitate uh, how smoothly this process goes on. I can contact, uh, I can initial contact with the, uh, uh, with the faculty member uh, and then introduce you and then you two can can talk to each other. Uh, uh, if uh, if it doesn't if it doesn't work, I I can also uh, take my part. Well, it's a complex pro process, uh, and I'm always at hand. Uh, so uh, this is mainly my responsibility of how to do it. As for the external reviewer, uh, uh, I do it usually uh, uh, in uh, consultations with with your advisor. Since advisor knows uh, uh, the leading specialist in this sphere better than me, so we do it together. Uh, first uh, uh, advisor, the first advisor contacts the person whom he wants to make an uh, uh, external review, and then I send him or her the uh, official uh, official offer. This work is uh, paid, uh, so we pay for these services for these services and. Uh, 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 in most of the cases, we have uh, uh, top specialists in this sphere as external advisors. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's a relief. So I have a second question. Uh, let's suppose that I got into this program of Eurasian Studies and mm -hmm. successfully finished this program. And then I want to continue my studies, like to apply for a PhD program somewhere else. And sure. should I... Um, spend full five time five years uh studying my phd or is it going to be shorter because i already have my master's degree in the future yeah no having master's degree it does not give you any uh, uh any privilege i would say because phd course is, is phd course right and uh uh, uh, uh I think it's one of the uh, basic requirements for PhD course that you have to first take MA course, right? Uh, and uh, 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 yeah, in uh, Western tradition, and we are adhering here Western tradition, uh, uh, PhD course takes a uh, long time, but uh, PhD course is uh, uh, the, uh, the highest uh, scholarly degree you can get, right? Early in Kazakhstan, we, we had Soviet model when you first had to get, uh, gain the candidate degree and then doctoral degree, and it, it took even longer time, right, than gaining only PhD degree. So yes, uh, uh, PhD degree is, is a long process, taking some five years and uh, even longer for some, some people. It, it all depends on how quickly you will write your thesis. But unfortunately, uh, uh, having MA degree does not give you any privilege and can, it cannot accelerate the process, but it, it makes you more uh, more prepared uh, for, for, for PhD program. Uh, our MA uh, graduates, uh, 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 the fact that they are pursuing their doctorate courses uh, in the prestigious universities in the West uh, uh, is the kind of evidence uh, of the high quality of our program. Okay, thank you, Professor. Yeah, thank you, Didara. So, also, Martha, uh, yes. Uh, one, uh, yes, Martha, I, yeah. Yes, I would like to tell you something. 
first place, uh, thank you very much for your explanation. My name is Alberto. I live in Spain and I would like to know what are the, requir the requirements that I would need to fulfill in order to get a scholarship so I can study in your National University. Uh -huh. Okay, I can take this one. Okay. Uh, well, um, if uh, you uh, selected by the admissions committee and recommended for admission, uh, the Nazarbayev University, Nazarbayev University offers a Baikon and Baikon scholarship for international candidates. And uh, this scholarship covers fee, basic medical insurance, and the monthly stipend. And so all accepted students receive a monthly stipend uh, in amount of 125,000 TNG. Uh, so this uh, stipend is the same for all students, regardless of their citizenship. Okay. So once you are uh, selected for uh, admission, uh, so you will get a scholarship. So, but uh, you mean that... But you should know that, that uh, the admissions is, uh, uh, is quite competitive. Uh, so there will be a lot of uh, applicants. Okay. And uh, you should try to um, to um, to improve your application package. To try your best to have a very strong recommendation letters. To um, to demonstrate your willingness in your essay. So that's all could help you. So you mean that at the moment I get my admission. Mm -hmm. automatically I get the, um, the scholarship yes uh, also of, of course there are uh, options when the student and then uh, the applicants uh, they applied for um, to be uh, to be admitted and uh, they uh, choose uh, to be a self-funded students there is also an option but uh, this is the admissions committee who decides uh, whether you get a scholarship or not. Uh, if you are a um, very strong candidate, then uh, you will be recommended for admission and you will get this scholarship. Okay, so it is unprobable that I pass and I am accepted, but mm -hmm. I require to be self-funded. Uh, I don't think that uh, this, uh, uh, usually uh, international applicants um, they um, they are reviewed uh, by the admissions committee uh, on the same um, basis mm -hmm. like other uh, applicants. So uh, if you are just uh, admitted, then you will need uh, you, there is no need to uh, pay something uh, okay. because. This scholarship, as I said earlier, covers the tuition fee and medical insurance, monthly stipend, and uh, a code, uh, a code and about the visa issues, I'm not sure, but uh, this one should be also um, clarified by the um, International Cooperation Department. We have uh, at Nazarbayev University, like, um, the whole department that works with the uh, international okay, uh, students. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, so, uh, I, I can only add that uh, as a member of uh, admissions committee, uh, we uh, usually uh, make offers to the, we usually shortlist successful candidates uh, uh, having in mind how many fellowships we have. So if you were shortlisted, um, with high probability, we can say that we do have a fellowship for you. Ah, okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, professor, we have questions from Tamiris. Yes, yes, please, Tamiris. Uh, in the chat box, she's asking what... Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, can I ask the final question? Due to poor internet connection, I probably missed that part. What WLL courses are available for elected? Should language courses be related to core courses or other languages are available as well? Uh, well, uh, WLL courses uh, uh, offer uh, uh, 
uh, wide range of courses in, in the sphere of uh, uh, literature and uh, uh, languages. Uh, uh, I think that language, linguistic courses uh, uh, can be taken as electives as well. And uh, uh, you can, uh, uh, language training can also be considered as one of the electives. Uh, I, I'm not sure I, I, I understand the question about uh, language courses related to core courses. Uh, uh, no idea what, what, what you mean. Uh, I'm sorry. But, uh, yes? uh, I mean that uh, should the courses that um, students take uh, from VLL department uh, should relate it to mm -hmm. Eurasian languages or it could be languages, oh. for example, of uh, European countries or other countries. Well, yeah, yeah, now, now I got it. No, uh, if, well, we have, for example, we have a student who nowadays who's studying the uh, 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 Polish diaspora in Kazakhstan, right? So her uh, subject of her research are uh, the, the diaspora of Poles. And if she prefers to take some classes in, in, in Polish, right, Polish language, uh, of course it will be considered as, as, uh, uh, as the uh, kind of reasonable, reasonable course for her program. So uh, you, you can take whatever la language is available and whatever language is, is uh, uh, instrumental for pursuing your research. This is the main factor. There's no specific limitations that you only have to study say Turkic or uh, Arabic languages, there's no such restrictions at all. And uh, WLL uh, offers courses on say, for example, the uh, uh, language policy, uh, how language is uh, uh, you know, implemented, language policy is implemented in different countries, how one language uh, is uh, replacing the other language and so on. Then there are courses on, uh, uh, the uh, Russophone literature in, 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 say, in Central Asia. Uh, uh, I already has mentioned the course on oral epics of Central Asia. So WLL uh, offers uh, a number of different interesting courses every, every semester. And you know uh, what I have uh, forgot to mention, that you can also, uh, you can ask, uh, you, you can elect not only uh, uh, upper level courses, uh, but also, uh, we have the uh, rule that every MA student can, can choose any other undergraduate course uh, beginning from 200 level uh, uh, based on agreement with the uh, professor who teaches that course. So if you don't find a relevant uh, uh, and needed course among the upper level courses, you can always uh, choose the, the undergraduate course as well. And we have, of course, a very rich choice of undergraduate courses uh, at uh, NU. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Tomiris. So, uh, Aaron Daniel, yes, he would like to ask a question. So, can you please ask your question, Aaron Daniel? Yes, hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. I'd like to ask a question. It's rather about technical, maybe about to, to Ms. Um I applied to this MA course last year. Uh, I didn't get admitted, but I had some questions uh, because I was not sure about uh, my GPA because uh, I'm not a Kazakhstani resident and it, neither USA. So like it's uh, calculated in every country differently and that uh, it was like my GPA was good enough. And I did some research, uh, I Googled some um, OICE uh, standards, according to those, my GPA was, was good. But I just wanted to know, but I didn't get an answer about that. And, but I still, I'm a fan of this course because when I got to know that it, it's available, I got so, so hyped because it's, it's, I'm really into this. And uh, I would love to try, try again. I've been contemplating that, but if it, the problem is with my GPA, I can get accepted. So that's why I'd like to know if, uh, what, what about the rules about that? Yes, uh, thank you. I remember your application. Um, yes, you know that the entry requirement is uh, GPA and 
uh, there are rules uh, that apply to all um, and new applicants and admissions committee, they can uh, make exceptions in this um, requirement. Um, and I uh, also uh, know that the admissions uh, department, if I'm not mistaken, they have um, like a uh, link to the uh, system when you can calculate your GPA. Uh, but I should um, check this one. If I found this, uh, if I find this um, you know, link information, I could uh, send you also. Um, but uh, I'm not, I don't, uh, I can't, um, I cannot make like uh, recommendations or uh, just say things that you should apply again and again. I think you should try, but in this case, I think yes, GPA is uh, like a try requirement and we should check this one. Um, I mean, I, I don't ask any like e exception or like I, I wouldn't like to yes, accept it. Just, just, uh, just to get information whether it's... Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand your request. Um, so if, if you could send that link where I can check if mm -hmm. it's, it's good enough or not, I would be really grateful. Okay, yes, sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, Professor Muzaffari asking, is asking, uh, what is your uh, research field? My, my research field is uh, uh, Buddhism uh, and history of, of uh, uh, Buddhism in, in Tibet and uh, uh, Mongolia and Russia as well. So, I study uh, Buddhist uh, communities uh, in, in Inner Asia. Uh, since uh, I, I now live in, in Kazakhstan, my interest shifted to also to some Kazakhstani issues. For example, together with my colleagues, we studied the sacred landscape of Kazakhstan, different uh, uh, sacred sites that include also Buddhist monasteries. And uh, I also uh, study the history of uh, uh, Kazakh Jungar confrontation and wars. Um, uh, so I'm a historian and I study the uh, primary sources in. Uh, Mongolian and Tibetan. This is my uh, specialization and research interest. Thank you for your for your for your interest. Uh, thank you, Professor. So it would be great if the GPA calculation link can be shared with everyone. So I think uh, Asim can uh, share with with uh, with us. Yes, Asim. Yes, but I need to find, <laughs> first of all. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Asim, can you please tell about uh, Nazarbayev University Zero-Year uh, zero Program? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, actually, we have, um, I can see among the participants, um, successful um, student, uh, a new ZIP student, um, he applied uh, to this program uh, and was uh, selected uh, as a ZIP uh, student um, after the, uh, okay, right now, I'll just start. Um, so uh, for applicants who have a high level of uh, motivation to study, uh, but do not have high level of English, uh, there is an um, program, Nazarbayev University Zero Year of Master's Programs. Uh, this is the preparatory year of the master's programs, and uh, it's like two semester full-time intensive English and content course program uh, for conditional enrolled students. Uh, the applicant must have a total uh, IELTS, test, uh, IELTS uh, score of at least um, six point zero to apply for this program with sub-score requirements no less than 5.5. Uh, so it means that uh, you um, go uh, through the uh, selection uh, just like other applicants, um, but an admissions committee reviews, uh, review your application package. And if you are good enough, uh, but your IELTS uh, is a little bit uh, lower uh, that is required for, um, to apply for uh, 
for the main program, you can be uh, recommended for NUZIP. After the end of NUZIP, uh, you, you will be enrolled to uh, main program. So uh, this program provides an opportunity uh, for those applicants who would like to study hard and uh, um, to be researchers in this uh, field, uh, but they need to improve their English, like this one. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Asim. Thank you very much. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, you will uh, share with the link, yes, with the G yeah. <laughs> GPS <laughs> question. Okay, thank <laughs> you. So uh, um, maybe we can, Asim, tell about the dormitory, yes? Uh, ah, dormitory. <laughs> for international students, yes, like I said. Yes, um, right now, um, Yes, uh, there is a uh, like program benefits as I already mentioned is a monthly student also on campus housing. Um, the cost is uh, like um, very low. <laughs> First mm -hmm. semester is like uh, 29,000 tenge and um, you will be able to uh, be accommodated in a very nicely uh, uh, dormitory with the um, uh, canteen, with uh, all uh, necessary facilities. There are like also um, opportunities uh, to be uh, actively involved in student uh, life. Um, but um, uh, for now there is like a special circumstances and limited, uh, uh, num only a no limited number of uh, students can be accommodated uh, on dormitory because of uh, pandemic, uh, but uh, there is a, a special circumstance for uh, international uh, students. So if you are an international student, you can be accommodated uh, in dormitory uh, right now. So this is like a, a benefit <laughs> for uh, our international students. So Asiyam Rasu is asking, is dormitory only for international students? No, the dormitory is not only for international students. Of course, the dormitory uh, is available for uh, residents of Kazakhstan also. And, um, but there is a, like, um, a very important issue that uh, the priority will be provided to the uh, residents of outside of North Sultan. Um, but uh, even if you are a resident of Nusultan, you can be also, um, your request can be also um, be, uh, considered. considered. Mm -hmm. Yes. And okay. our pets allowed in the dormitory. Is it mandatory to live on campus? I live in Kazakhstan right now and I have my own apartment. This is not a mandatory to live on campus, but if you wish, uh, if you would like to, uh, you can live on campus. And uh, I'm not sure about pets because um, <laughs> I don't really know about the rules that apply to dormitory life. Um, uh, I'm not sure about this one. I, 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 I used to live. That. I used to live on campus with my pet, and uh, mm -hmm. there was no problem with that. But I'm not sure about uh, students. Students, uh, yes. Uh, so yeah, that's maybe different. That's, uh, difference yes because i know that faculty members they can live with the pets <laughs> but i don't <laughs> know about uh, the students so <clears throat> okay thank you Asim. Um, uh, professor do you have any uh, do you have something to add because I think... hey, another question uh, yes yeah, sure. uh, we have another question yeah. mm -hmm. yes uh, we, far, uh, we can see Mm. Uh, I don't understand that. So, uh, how many students study every year in Eurasia studies in Moscow? How many? Yeah, uh, 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 we have now two cohorts, and in each of these cohorts, we have 14 students. 14 students. Uh, so, overall, 20, 28 students are now taking uh, the PhD course. And uh, uh, I know that uh, every year the program uh, uh, grows a little bit, one by one, and maybe next year we will have some 15 or 16 students uh, 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 you know, admitted to the program. 
Uh, but so far we have 28 students overall, uh, first year and second year students, 28. Okay, thank you. Uh, did I wrote in the chat that students are not allowed to have that's sure. in the dorm, unfortunately. So, uh, <laughs> Professor, do you have something to add about the program, maybe? No, I think uh, I have said everything. If you have any questions, you can also uh, send your questions to directly to me. Let me share my email here. Uh, yes, uh, dear uh, students, if you have uh, questions regarding the program requirements, admission, please uh, don't hesitate to contact us i will write down our email address yeah i don't know why but i i cannot type in in, in the chat uh, uh, maybe so. yeah it's okay, it's okay yes. if, if you, yes, you can direct okay. yes, yes. questions yes if, yes we'll uh, redo it yeah. yeah okay mm -hmm. so uh dear students so all the webinars oh this webinar will be posted on our ssh youtube channel and um follow-up uh, email will be sent uh, to you tomorrow. So please keep tracking your emails. Also, uh, don't forget that we have uh, uh, pages, school, uh, school, our school's pages on social media, on Instagram and Facebook. Also, we have our school website. Uh, I will type it down in the chat box. So, so if there are no questions, um, uh, I think we can now end, yes, our session. Okay, so, thank you. Yes, no thank questions, you yes. Thank you, yes, thank you for joining our webinar. Uh, today was the last day of the SSH virtual open house days in master's and doctoral programs. So uh, we, were, we were very happy to see you all. Uh, thank you for your uh, participation. Thank you, Isadai and Asem. <laughs> yes, thank you all. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, thank you Bye. very much. Thank you, Asiam. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.